normally you would say that a utility company, they're not very visible, but Hofor, uh, the client on this project, they want to be a little bit visible. They want us to be aware of where our heating comes from and where our drinking water comes from, just, just a little bit. And that was the background, of course, for having an architect's competition. My job at this office is to work with light and architecture. And here we simply see those two things as uh, two sides of the same coin, you can say. In this project, my job has been to connect everyone. And that's very typical. I'm usually the ambassador for light when I talk to the architects. And I'm the ambassador for architecture when I talk to the lighting designers. And I make sure that I connect them and I speak the languages of both those professions, you could say. And my job is to make sure it runs smoothly and everyone is, is happy with the collaboration. When we applied to be shortlisted for this competition, it was really just a facade competition. And we thought, we can't make a facade and just let it be dark when the sun sets. We wanted uh, the plant to show in its exterior what goes on in the interior in some way. It's uh, the ambition of the Copenhagen municipality that Copenhagen is supposed to be a carbon neutral capital by 2025. And the new unit at um, Amarberg, which is called Bio4, uh, is fueled with uh, wood chips, certified wood chips, um, to be carbon neutral. The power plant unit is really just an industrial building and we didn't have much to do with that. But we clad it in this facade of tree trunks uh, as a curtain, you could almost say, of, of tree trunks. And it's just a one layer curtain on, on three of the facades, but the north facade is different. Uh, there are five or six layers on top of each other of tree trunks, so it's quite thick. And in that uh, forest that it almost becomes, there is a staircase leading up from the ground and to a viewing platform uh, at the top. And all the tree trunks are held up by a galvanized steel jig and they just uh, fly there. And a very important point is that we want to show depth. We want the facade to be a little bit difficult to understand um, and that is particularly interesting at night when the illumination comes on. Right from the onset, actually, when we um, applied to get into the competition, that was in 2015, my job was to uh, contact uh, the lighting designers that we wanted on the team. Uh, this project started for us uh, with a call from Jesper to the, the office. We'd met Jesper at, at um, various conferences. We'd always wanted to do a project together. And this nice idea of a project came along as part of the architectural facade concept to do a narrative-based lighting story. Part of the development of the idea was to, to create a really enigmatic feel of a, uh, of a wood. But it wasn't just a surface of the wood, it was the layered nature of, uh, of, of light in the wood. So, you know, there's lots of shadow, lots of silhouette, lots of contrast. And what's really fun about it is it, uh, it needs to look good as a spectacle when you stand back. But it also needs to feel um, quite enigmatic when you're inside because you can walk through the facade. Lighting ideas that have a narrative behind them, you have to believe in the story. It's not just uh, you know, a, a, a simple idea that you feel will work. If you really believe in the story, you don't have to deliver uh, find a way to deliver that magic in some way. So there are many different ways that we try to create, try to imagine how the light would work in a forest. Light integrated into, um, into, into, the, into the trunks which would maybe come alive, um, uh, which would again play with the kind of the silhouetting and what have you. But it became more obvious to us that um, but, but by lighting onto the facade and through the facade, you would create a much richer sense of layers. Uh, and you would do it in quite an efficient way. Rather than having thousands of individual light sources all over the facade, by doing something which felt so natural, you had to almost create the sense of one source of light, which again is a very natural thing. There isn't 10 moons and five suns. There's one source of light, all in one direction. So all of the light sources work together to create effectively one source 
one source of light. Spears Major suggested that we should use this particular luminaire, which has a lot of functions, really a lot of, of different possibilities built into it. And we've worked on uh, reducing the, the things that we wanted to use from it all. We've tried colors, we've tried different gobos, we've tried many things, perhaps to make sure that we what we didn't want to do, what we didn't need for this lighting design. But in the end, we actually use a lot of the possibilities of that luminaire. But it's all done to create a very subtle and, and very, you could say, simple um, aesthetics. It's not about showing off and telling the world all the things we can do. It's just about being uh, straightforward. You want the attention on the effect and the feeling and not really on wow, this looks uh, absolutely um, technical. That's not the point. On a large facade project, that in involves lots of different light sources working together. Um, the way that the light blends is, uh, is really important, so it looks natural. It doesn't look like artificial light. And just to achieve that is a huge amount of effort. And I think that process of discovering the right effect, you need to make sure that you've got the right kit with you to do that. And what we found with the selection of the kit that we used is that it allowed us the enough variables to play with an idea. And it wasn't just about making one section look good. It's a huge facade. The whole thing has to look good together. You're on the harbour in Copenhagen with huge variations in weather conditions, extremely harsh environments. But we want this effect to happen reliably all the time. And you know, you need to make sure you pick the right kit to do that. Otherwise, it's fantastic for a month, it's fantastic for a year, but if if one of the pieces of the puzzle begins to break down, it very quickly looks very bad. We didn't know the number that we needed or wanted, but we were actually very happy when we could boil it down to just 49 luminaires put outside of of the facade. You don't need to go rappelling, you can access them from a cherry picker. It's really uh, quite straightforward and they're very sturdy. Um, it doesn't matter if it rains or snows and we've got the ocean with salt spray and so on. We believe that these luminaires can really do the job and, and they fit well in a power plant environment, you can say, with their solid and, and you know good quality. The development of the effect has evolved over the testing period. So we sit in the studio and we understand where we want the fixtures to point and all the practical things about how you're gonna mount them, how high they need to be mounted, how that works as a fabrication on site, etc. And for some projects, that's the entire project. And this project, that's the, the starting point. That discovery of what was the right effect, what was the right gobo pattern, what was the right speed of movement is part of an evolution and it's not when you finish a project it's not just a case of saying yeah it does exactly what we expected it to do and here you go the fine tuning of a of a project like this is means that even at the very very last moment you're still making some big decisions about speed focus intensity balance you have to have this um, confidence that the kit you've got can allow you still to play because if you get there and say, okay, it's this angle, it's this beam angle, it's this projection, why does it look bad? You need to have the ability just to play around with the focus and, and the kit we've got does that really, really, really effectively and really easily. When you work on the development of a project like this, you you do uh, tests and mock-ups on a, a relatively small scale. On a project like this, there's no small scale, but to see the entire facade come to life it's quite a magic moment, even for us. That's partially because of time, but partially to kind of, the, it's the excitement and relief of knowing that the project's got in it, everything we set out for. A light project really benefits a lot from light tests, full-scale light tests. And I think the first light test we did outdoors with the, the light, uh, the luminaire that we wanted was maybe three years before uh, the finished project and the tests we did really showed that what we had thought didn't work out very well so um, we went back and, and started rethinking everything and then in March 2020 we had um, a big test on site on the first tree trunks that had been mounted just uh, recently 
and I believe we had nine luminaires on scaffolding, um, just uh, illuminating the corner of the building. And um, such a test is, it's the first time you see full scale what you think you want to do. And it turned out to be astonishingly good. Uh, that was really wonderful. We had lots of people involved doing this, uh, a fulfillment partner who'd done the practical uh, work on site before Spears Major came over with the programming and so on. And it, it was a very successful uh, event. That event uh, took place just a handful of days before the whole world shut down uh, due to the COVID crisis. I think maybe that was the the night of the last handshakes for more than a year. <laughs> it's quite a responsibility to make sure it's uh, it's special. Um, and special in such a way that it finds its place in an authentic way in the skyline, in the loosest sense of the word, in the composition of the city. You know, we're very aware, having worked in Copenhagen before, about you know it's uh, it's not a high-rise city certainly it's not on the harbor um, there's a lot of darkness or a lot of areas where there is no artificial light or if there's an artificial light it's at a very low level um, and in a very kind of restrained way so when you do a facade lighting project in a city like Copenhagen you have to recognize your responsibility not to overwhelm suddenly do something crazy. After all, this is not a cinema screen. It's an art piece, if you like, on a authentic project, which is doing something for the city. It's a, it's a, it's a very important building. It, it needed something to recognize it's a very important building. It, in many ways, because of its location, it has a certain modesty to it. Um, but actually, it's a remarkable story that what this project is and what it means for the carbon footprint of, of Copenhagen. The way the uh, design team of this project was organized was that we worked in direct partnership with Gottlieb Paladin. We understood the ambition of the architecture, we understood the detailing of the architecture, we understood the spirit of their facade um, idea. Um, the next kind of most important kind of um, set of people were the client to understand what they thought they were getting. And it wasn't just about us saying to them, you're getting this idea, it's kind of in a way develop the thinking to make sure that they were fully convinced with what they were getting. We talk a lot about you know the light and what the light kind of where it is and how it, how it looks. What was most ex I think important about this was the experience. What did it make you feel? The facade lighting is of course something that you see from a distance from the outside but this facade is different because you can walk inside it when you walk up the staircase inside the facade that, that goes between the trunks, you can look through big windows into the power plant where you know the wood is being burnt. And uh, the installation is outside of the facade. So w when you walk in there, you're not close to the luminaires or anything. And the experience is absolutely extraordinary. You're walking between these tree trunks and the light moves and shifts and you're just absorbed in it. It's absolutely amazing. The masts are designed based on many, many parameters and many, many wishes. So we had to design the masts to be very solid. We had to design them so they fit well with the tree trunks and, and the whole look of the power plant, of course. And we need cables and we need connections and things in, in those legs of the masts. And some of them hold three luminaires and some hold five. They also hold the street lights and the cameras. These masts are really complicated installations and they are industrial design at the same time. And they need to fit well with the landscape design that they are put in. So um, many, many things have been merged into these masts. We've worked closely, of course, with Martin Professional, the manufacturer of the luminaires, and we've worked with Light Nordic, uh, the distributor here in Scandinavia of the luminaires, and we've had Stowenborg as our local fulfillment partner, the practical people who know perfectly well how to handle the luminaires. You can't uh, expect um, any installer to be able to handle them well, so we need these professional people. 
And it's been quite clear that these three companies uh, know each other really well and coordinate very well between themselves. So it's been a pleasure for us, for the architects and for Spears Major, to see it just uh, function perfectly. For us, our relationships with 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 um, with equipment and with manufacturers is kind of fundamental to the success. These are the the tools that we're using, and part of that is is having trust and faith in the network that that manufacturer has. So it's not just whether you like the piece of kit; it's whether you actually believe that through all the trials and tribulations of of delivering a piece of kit to a project and then playing with the light that everybody does their part, whether that be a support network in the UK through the manufacturer or here in Denmark on a local scale in, in kind of Copenhagen. Um, and then there's this relationship we have with kind of headquarters of Martin Professional because we've worked together for a long time on various projects and 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 also the kind of the, the supply network to make sure that we're all, we're all joined up and we're all getting what we want. Um, because if anything falls through the cracks in the process, you then get to say, that, oh, wow, why doesn't it do what I said to you five years ago I wanted it to do? It's been a very joined up process, actually. And I think that that is part of the success, the quality of an organization like Martin Professional, because they go through the entire process. It's not just about, you know, we've got some great kit. I hope you like it. Is it useful? In a way, that's only a small part of the process. The real process is what you want to do with it. How's it going to behave? Is there any customization we need to do? How are we best to supply it to the project? What might you want it to do? Does that have any impact on, on what it is to do with the lensing or what have you? It's a conversation which starts before the specification and it carries on right through to the, the, fact, to, the, to, the to the final moments, really. Believing in the idea, believing in the concept, is something that as designers we are 100% committed to, then making the wider team feel the same level of commitment is, uh, is very important. In architectural projects, finding that level of commitment is sometimes hard on this kind of project because this is a project which lives exactly in between architectural lighting and effect lighting, theatre lighting, if you like. But it's, it's permanent. Knowing that a job is going to be a success is that when you know you've got the right people around who are motivated and will do what it takes to, to deliver. Special relationship tends to lead to special results. From now on, it's the same light every night. The point is that this is just part of the facade, a natural part of the facade, and this is a natural part of the power plant and what it does to Copenhagen and the way it's received by Copenhageners is just a very static thing. You can go and enjoy it now or five years from now, 10 years from now. This is just the way Biofall looks. Yeah.